Welcome to Ellie Scrubs In. Today we're scrubbing in for a total hip arthroplasty, or total hip replacement, one of the most transformative procedures in orthopedic surgery. We'll walk through the standard posterior approach with detailed surgical steps, highlight common variations, describe the instruments used at each stage, and point out key pearls and pitfalls. Let's get started. Step 1. Indications and Patient Positioning Common indications for THA include end-stage osteoarthritis, avascular necrosis, rheumatoid arthritis, and certain femoral neck fractures. Patients typically present with debilitating hip pain and reduced mobility that has failed conservative treatment. Under general anesthesia, the patient is positioned lateral decubitus with the operative side facing up. A bean bag or pegboard is used to stabilize the trunk and pelvis. The hip and knee are flexed to 90 degrees, padded and prepped in sterile fashion. Pearl. Meticulous positioning is crucial. Malpositioning leads to poor access and inaccurate component placement. Ensure bony landmarks and neutral pelvic tilt are confirmed. Step 2. Skin incision and exposure. A posterolateral incision is made over the greater trochanter, curving slightly posteriorly. Dissection proceeds through subcutaneous tissue using electrocautery, and the fascia lata is incised in line with the skin incision using Metzenbaum scissors or a scalpel. The gluteus maximus is split bluntly. Retractors are placed, and the short external rotators, piriformis, obturator internus, and gemelli are identified and carefully detached from the femur using cautery and tagged with non-absorbable suture for later repair. Pitfall. Inadequate protection of the sciatic nerve, which lies just deep and medial to the rotators, can lead to devastating injury. Always use blunt dissection and place retractors cautiously. Step 3. Capsulotomy and femoral head dislocation. The posterior capsule is incised in a T or H-shaped pattern with Metzenbaum scissors. The hip is internally rotated and adducted to allow posterior dislocation of the femoral head using a bone hook and hip skid. Pearl. Internal rotation and controlled traction aid in smooth dislocation without excessive force. Avoid sudden movements that could damage surrounding soft tissue. Once dislocated, the femoral neck is cut using an oscillating saw, guided by preoperative templating and intraoperative measurement. Step 4. Acetabular preparation and cup placement. The acetabulum is exposed with Homan or Cobra retractors. Residual labrum and cartilage are debrided with a curette and reamer. A series of acetabular reamers, increasing in size, are used to create a hemispheric cavity. Pearl. The optimal orientation for the cup is approximately 40 to 45 degrees of abduction and 15 to 20 degrees of antiversion. Malposition increases dislocation risk or wear. The acetabular cup is placed using an impactor and mallet, and fixation is achieved with press fit or screws. A polyethylene liner or dual mobility insert is then seated. Variation. In patients with poor bone stock, cemented cups may be used. In dysplastic hips, augmentation or a custom cup may be required. Step 5. Femoral canal preparation and implantation. The femur is exposed by flexing and externally rotating the leg. The canal is opened with a box osteotome, then sequentially broached with femoral rasps. An appropriate trial femoral stem and head are placed, and the hip is reduced to assess stability, leg length, and offset. Adjustments are made to the neck length or head size as needed. Once confirmed, the final femoral stem is implanted with a press fit or cemented technique, depending on bone quality. The definitive head is placed and the hip is reduced. Pitfall. Undersizing the femoral component increases fracture risk and poor fixation. Confirm canal fill and torsion alignment before committing. Step 6. Closure. The external rotators and posterior capsule are repaired to the greater trochanter using non-absorbable suture and a tendon anchor if needed. The gluteus maximus fascia is closed, followed by layered closure of subcutaneous tissue and skin using absorbable sutures and skin adhesive or staples. Drain placement is optional based on surgeon preference and intraoperative bleeding. Pearl. 
Robust soft tissue repair reduces dislocation risk, especially with posterior approach. Postoperative care and recovery. Patients are encouraged to ambulate on post-op day one with physical therapy. Anticoagulation is started for DVT prophylaxis. Posterior approach patients may have hip precautions to avoid flexion past 90 degrees, internal rotation, or adduction for the first six weeks. Pain is managed with a multimodal regimen. Most patients are discharged in one to three days and begin outpatient rehab. Pitfall. Failure to monitor for signs of infection, hematoma, or nerve injury can lead to delayed complications. Educate patients on wound care and signs of concern. Final thoughts. Total hip arthroplasty is one of the most successful surgeries in modern medicine. With precise execution and awareness of key pitfalls, it offers life-changing pain relief and mobility restoration. Variations in implants, approach, and fixation techniques allow surgeons to tailor the operation to each patient's anatomy and activity level. Thanks for scrubbing in with Ellie Scrubs In. For more narrated walkthroughs, don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment with your preferred approach to hip replacement.